A little word of peace. Well, part of me is still in shock over all that's happening. I think right now I'm kind of in between a, a state of shock and maybe just a hint of beginning uh, to have a new normal. I don't know, it's a very difficult time. And on behalf of the pastors and staff, certainly our hearts go out and ache for all that are affected by the outbreak. Of course, just recently with the unemployment we hear of, we continue to have people who are sick and families caring for them. We have the elderly um, among us who are feeling isolated. We have the vulnerable in our community. It seems like everyone is affected, families with children now at home and uh, jobs, not just in terms of unemployment, but jobs changing now with people working virtually and at home. We have the worry over our supplies. And then of course here at church too, how, how do we do church now? Someone came in this week and, and shared with me that this is strange because the church is without people. And my first thought was, no, no, the church is the people. How can that be? But I can see what was meant by this comment. That's for sure. We look around and hallways here are empty. The sanctuary is empty. But yet we're still finding ways to be church together. And those are some things I want to update you about. In fact, earlier this afternoon, I, we sent out a, a mass email to the congregation that really details ways that we are still being church together. So please see that email that will have more detailed information. But just want to highlight that our live stream worship continues on Sunday morning at 945 each Sunday morning. And that will be available all week long so you can always watch that uh, worship service. We are now live streaming our Wednesday evening Lenten service. So that's at 6.30, the next three Wednesday evenings. And that still includes the Holden Evening Prayer Service as well as Bob Goff's videos on Love Does, our Lenten series. Uh, we are also connecting here at Word of Peace with prayer every day. And so we are inviting everyone to pray every day at 9 a.m. And that way, as a church community, congregation-wide, we can all be praying together at the same time. And there are some instructions in the email about how, how we can come together for that prayer time as well. We are also uh, being church together by serving one another. There is a great need in our community right now for food at Cross Services. And we are a resource center for cross services, so you can bring food to the church building here to Word of Peace uh, every morning that our, our church or every day that our church office is open from 8:30 to 4:30, and you can bring those to door number one, those non-perishable food items. Again, there's a helpful list in the mass email that went out, and then we're going to have the cross van here on Sunday, March 22nd from 8.30 to 11.30. So come that Sunday morning and you can have some social distance, bring your bags of uh, non-perishable food items and put them in the, the cross van. We also have ways we'll continue to connect one another. There's all kinds of information in the, that email about our children, youth and family ministries, our care ministries. On a personal note, I just want to share with you something that's been real helpful for me in these first days of this outbreak becoming more imminent and, and social distancing becoming more a part of our lives. And that is the, the power of God's word and having that time that's so important to spend reading the Bible and doing a devotion. I, I think at a time like this, we realize how important the basics of our faith life really are. You know, there's there's some truth to the, the three Fs, family, friends, and, and faith, and how important it is to lean on our faith in these times. And what I found really helpful for me is engaging in Bible reading each and every day, doing a devotion. The past few mornings, I've just 
pulled up in the easy chair with a cup of coffee and I pulled out God Pause, which we have available through our website and read the devotion, read the Bible reading. And I found that to be very centering, very grounding for me in, in this time. And I, I'm, I'm sure it can be a source of strength and hope and, and support and guidance for, for you as well. This morning, I didn't have a chance to do that before I left. I had a busy morning before I left. So in the car, I prayed as I came to church. And I, I don't worry, my eyes weren't closed or anything as I was driving along. But something that's helpful for me in my prayer life is thinking uh, of the hand here with the, the five fingers and lead, having that lead us in prayer that we're uh, the pinky reminds us to pray for the most vulnerable among us, especially at this time we pray for the sick and uh, those who are vulnerable. But at, at all times, we're praying for the hungry and the poor. The ring finger reminds us to pray for our loved ones, our, our families, our friends, those close to us. The uh, big finger reminds us to pray for our leaders, uh, those who guide us, those who govern us, and give us direction. Also, the, the pointer finger reminds us of those who direct us and point us. Maybe we can think of uh, school administrators and teachers. We can think of uh, pastors and social services and, and healthcare workers and those who really uh, direct us where we're going. And then don't forget yourself, the thumb pointing at you, asking God for help and forgiveness and wisdom and guidance. Indeed, God is with us. We hear that time and time again through the Bible. Psalm 23, uh, even though you walk in the darkest valley, fear no evil for I am with you. Uh, Isaiah 43 verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I am with you. Emmanuel in the New Testament, Jesus, God with us. Uh, we know that God is with us through us through all of this, continuing to give us hope and strength and guidance. At Word of Peace, we certainly miss you not being here in person. I heard someone also comment this week that, you know, this year we're going to have two Easter's. We're going to have the first Easter on Easter Sunday, which will probably be live stream at, at this point. Things could change, but it's certainly looking like it'll be a, a live stream Easter worship. But then the second Easter will be that Sunday, that Monday, when we can all come back together in person and worship. Just imagine what, what a great celebration that will be. So we certainly miss you, we love you, and we're praying for you. And again, know that God is with you.